Nicole. I'm Knits by Nicole, and welcome to my video knitting podcast. Uh, this is my first episode, and I'm just giving this a go. I was feeling really inspired by the knitting community this week and watching hours and hours of knitting podcasts and figured why not try that because I've been knitting a lot and I have a lot of things to show. Um, and I was particularly inspired by watching Emily Curtis and going back to her back episodes and in her first episode she said that she is really passionate about logging and tracking things and that really resonated with me and it felt like this might be a good way to document what I'm working on, what I'm getting. Um, I don't always write everything down that I'm doing so sometimes I forget what I'm doing and then uh, I think I'll remember later but you know I make so many things now, so it's hard to remember what I've done in the past uh, for future use. So here I am. I live in Houston, Texas uh, with my husband. I have um, in my day job, I'm a organizational change management consultant. So I help people at organizations through massive amounts of change that organizations are throwing at them every day, um, especially over the last two years. It's been a lot, a lot of change in what I'm working on and um, change is hard. So it can be stressful at times and I find a lot of joy in knitting and spend a lot of my time de-stressing and knitting. So let's see, so uh, what I'm wearing. So I, it's a little bit warm in Houston today, but you know, with the AC on, it's still kind of nice to have a little blanket or shawl. So. I am wearing the Dicker shawl um, in honor of the Ramadan wool club that's going on now. This was the pattern and the yarn from last year, uh, 2021 uh, Ramadan wool club. So it is a massive shawl, um, or you could call it a schlanket, uh, more like really more like a blanket shawl. So it is really cozy. Um, there's a lot of really fun colors. This was a collaboration between six different dyers so there's some Hawari Bazaar Yarn Co. There's some Abuelita Fiber Company. There is Knitting the Copy, uh, Aquarius Make, and uh, Fruitful Fusion. So um, I believe Corinne at Hawari Bazaar and Kelsey at Knitting the Copy wrote this pattern together so this was a collab between the two of them um, and this was actually the first knit that I made uh, where I followed the minis uh, that was a countdown calendar for the 30 days of Ramadan last year and I knit with the minis as I went so I didn't know what the end product would look like and it's super super colorful as you can see um, really kind of features all the colors of the rainbow so um, a little more about the pattern I think I believe uh, Dicker means prayer so it is a prayer shawl um, and it was honoring uh, the Muslim faith in the month of Ramadan. Um, I'm not Muslim myself, but it was really fun to learn a little bit more from the ladies of the Ramadan Wool Club. Um, and I guess one fun feature of this pattern, I think if I remember correctly, it was knit in groups of 33 stitches uh, for each band of these minis. So um, I think 33 is a particularly holy number. So it is. it was kind of like an opportunity for Muslim knitters or really anyone to um, be more mindful in their knitting practice and uh, uh, kind of be meditative or um, prayerful while knitting this prayer shawl. So um, had a lot of fun making this, um, knit up really, really quickly. I really enjoy uh, knits that have different sections so that I, you know, want to keep knitting, keep knitting until I get to the next section. So. That was really fun. Um, not really a recent cast off because this was last year's Ramadan Wool Club, but we are currently in the middle of Ramadan again, and I had such a lovely experience last year with these ladies that I decided to sign up for the Wool Club again this year. So that brings me into some of the yarn I've acquired recently. Um, let me start with the Ramadan Wool Club that I've received so far. So. Last year, they alternated um, dyers, so uh, mixed throughout were the yarns from the different dyers. And so this year, and I guess some of them are different bases, so it's particularly Abuelita Fiber Company. She uh, works with a lot of non-superwash wool, um, 
and and naturally dyes and I, I believe others naturally dye too like knitting a copy this is one of hers she has some interesting uh, natural dyes as well um, but I think they work together as like a fun colorful shawl but it's also fun to kind of work within one dyer and one base so this year what they did was they each featured um, they had each dyer featured for six days so um, you can kind of do a project that uses six mini skeins and feature one dyer. So they started out with Abuelita Fiber Company. So um, she is the dyer that does the non-superwash wool. Um, so it's a little bit more rustic. Uh, this base this year is 100% Cormo wool for all of them. Um, so this was day one and this is the color Buttercream. So just a nice light yellow. I don't know if the light yellow is really picking up too much. Um, but that went into the color Twilight. And this is kind of a medium yellow, slightly darker. You can kind of see there. And then day three was the color Golden Rose. Nice subtle pink. Day four was the color Flaming Coral. And we have that there. Day five was Lavender. I'm sorry, my, my minis are, uh, my mini cakes are a little bit messy. I was so excited about these. I'll tell you a little bit more in a little while about what I'm going to do with these minis, but I was so excited um, to start a new project with these that I wound them immediately, so they're not in their mini skein form. Um, and then finally, day six was Peaceful Amethyst. So this is the series. Let's see if I can pick up all six. So absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous series to start off the Ramadan Wool Club this year. And I believe... Uh, I believe she was inspired by a sunset. I know it's either, yes, the sunset sky. So Fatima at Abuelita Fiber Company. This is her sunset sky series. So really enjoyed that. Um, and then we moved into the next set of six in the Ramadan Wool Club. So this was Aquarius Make, Fatima at Aquarius Make, who had the next six days. And her theme for her set was based on random things that are part of her personal beliefs. So she chose to um, represent things that were meaningful to her. And these I do still have in my mini skeins. So this is day one. And this is the color Sujud. And so it's like a nice, kind of like brown, brownish purple. Uh, and I'm just checking. So these are 75-25. So 75 super wash merino, 25% nylon. Okay. And then day two was Ashra. So we have this nice purple and pink color. Day three, which I guess when I say day three, it was really day nine of Ramadan. So this was the second set. Um, this one was really fun, had kind of like the zebra stripe. And this one's called Nijat. And then the next day we had Hijab. And it's this really gorgeous purpley variegated here. So you can see this was a kind of a theme of purple, which was really, really fun. Um, the next day was Abaya, which is this mix of purples and blacks and really kind of moody, which is really, really fun. And then finally, the last day was Henna. And this one was like a little more 
brown and green to end off the series. And it has some kind of like tweedy bits. So really fun, totally different as you can see, totally different take than the first six days from Abuelita. So it's like really fun to see each dyer style. I'll try my best to hold these up, all six of these. So this was the second series of the Ramadan Wool Club this year. Um, so not, not sure what I'm gonna make with this yet, but that's okay, I can, you know, I have so many projects going on, so it's fun to have some in my backlog um, to make later. So have those, and then right now we are in the third series of six days. So I think we're right in the middle of Ramadan at uh, day 15 today, so I'll show you the teasers of the first three days of this series, and then I guess next time we will show the last three of this series because I, I haven't even seen them yet. Um, I've been opening one of these each day, and it's been a fun little surprise every day to see what is featured. So um, in the next series, uh, they're featuring yarns by Knitting Nakabi, Kelsey at Knitting Nakabi. Um, and she is one of the other natural dyers. So I find it so amazing, different natural dyers, what they use and the colors that they're able to achieve. Um, and I'm so impressed with the vibrancy Kelsey is able to get from her yarns. So these, this series, Kelsey was inspired by night prayers. Um, so all of these kind of link to night prayers in, in, Kelsey's, in Kelsey's inspiration. So, um, this is now day 13 of Ramadan. The color was Layette El Kot. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, and oh my gosh, this really, really bright electric yellow. Um, it's hard to even tell on the screen the actual color, but it is just so gorgeous. Um, I love it so much. And her base is really interesting to me. It is 50% non-superwash Cordell and 50% British mohair. Um, Honestly, I don't know if I've ever even touched a base like this. It's really unique, really fluffy. Um, I'm really, really excited to work with this one. I think I will probably have to reach out to Kelsey and go shopping on her site, uh, Knitting Nakabi, to get a full sweater quantity or something of this base because it is so fluffy. Um, I don't know if you can see kind of like the halo from this, uh, but it's really, really nice. Um, and all of her, it seems all of her minis are in that base, which is exciting. Okay, so day 14, which was day two of her series yesterday, um, was the colorway Isha. So it's this nice cream, really pretty in contrast with the electric yellow of yesterday. And then today's was really, really fun. Um, it's this bright blue. So gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. Um, really enjoying this Night Prayer series and really excited to see the next three to come. So I'll just hold these up together. So this is the first three of the Ramadan Wool Club 2022 of Knitting Nakabi. All right, so that is all my Ramadan Wool Club so far. Um, they've also been giving some fun extras, um, little chocolates and teas that I've already consumed. Um, but also some notions, some stitch markers. Um, Abuelita Fiber Company had this really cute button, so I'll need to find a project to put that on. And then Aquarius Make had this cute earring set. So it's this little, I love this sheep. Um, this was a really fun surprise. So it's this sheep wound with um, embroidery thread with an earring set, and it says pattern to come. So. I am looking forward to getting that pattern and making some fun earrings with that thread. Um, also have some stitch markers. I think I have a couple of really beautiful moon stitch markers. One of them is already on a secret project. Um, I don't have the other one with me, so apologies for that, but the extras have been super fun as part of the Ramadan Wool Club. Um, so I think that wraps up the Ramadan Wool Club so far. So I know I've talked about that a lot, but it's been really fun. Um, I do Advents as well, but it's it's 
um, exciting to see other makers uh, kind of taking a what might be a traditional Advent concept and applying it to um, other faiths and other times of the year. So I appreciate the girls at the Ramadan Wool Club um, for creating such an amazing experience uh, in the knitting community. So thank you, ladies. Um, all right, other acquisitions this week. I So I'll start with um, what I was inspired to cast on almost immediately. Um, haven't quite yet, but with the Abuelita Fiber Company series here, I really wanted to make a stripy turtle tank by Emily Curtis. Um, so I was shopping for a non-superwash wool and ended up getting, um, I, I went to shop La Mercerie and I'm going to try out their ampersand, uh, the Caslon fingering, which is 100% Cordell in oat number two. Um, so it's this nice brown color. I haven't tried ampersand fibers yet. I've, you know, bought other things from La Mercerie, but I'm really excited to try out her own um, base, own dye here. So this is the main color with the contrast colors for the stripy turtle tank. Um, and kind of fun. I didn't I actually didn't realize that Emily was starting at Shop La Mercerie last week, and so... I think I actually bought this yarn on her first day in the shop and um, connected with her on Instagram and I think she said she probably packed my order. So <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, I didn't intend for that, but I'm really excited for the stripy turtle tank. Um, haven't cast on quite yet because as I'll mention, um, I've been busy with some other knits. I've been really inspired by the community and uh, getting involved with um, test knits and uh, a knit along. So I'll mention that in a minute. Um, but for now, the other acquisition I had this week was also from Shop La Mercerie. Um, I think things like I go for one skein and then a sweater quantity of other yarn just you know jumps into my cart. So I got a sweater quantity of this beauty. This is Casual Fashion Queen. I haven't worked with Casual Fashion Queen yet, um, but this is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon fingering weight um, and the color weight is haunt and it's just so beautiful it's this really really light gray variegated or I guess tonal with um, really beautiful speckles so there's pink blue yellow um, right now I'm kind of thinking a weekender light by Andrew Mowry but that could change um, haven't cast on yet so Really excited about that. Um, that is to come. Um, so that's all the yarn I got this week. Um, all right, so whips. So from before this week, um, I have one secret baby knit that I'm still working on for a good friend. Um, I had three, four friends who were due with babies from early April to early May this year. So I made four baby projects for spring babies. So three are with their, um, th the moms of the babies. Uh, two of the babies have already been born and the third uh, is coming soon. And I'm working on the last baby knit. So I'm not going to show it here to keep that a surprise for my friend, um, but need to finish that probably this weekend. So, that has the due date of the baby, so I need to get it done before the baby comes. Um, the other whip that I have been working on for a couple weeks is this gorgeous, gorgeous sweater. Um, this is the Fonda by Caitlin Hunter at Boylan Knitworks. Um, and I thought this was a fun electric yellow for springtime. Um, so this is knit in um, Blue Sky Fibers, organic worsted cotton. Um, I have used this yarn before for baby blankets. This is my first garment. So it's, it's fun, it's cotton. I really enjoy working with cotton. Um, I think it'll be a lot warmer than I intended, I guess, for spring in Houston, but um, I guess it makes sense because it's worsted, uh, so I should have known, but at least it's cotton, um, so that's fun. I'm hoping to finish this soon. I did start, 
the ribbing already on the bottom. So I just have, I think, one or maybe two more inches of ribbing. Um, I like to do the sleeves first so that I can try it on and it's just kind of fun. It like I can hold it up and it looks more like a garment. Um, so I typically do sleeves first and then finish the body. Um, these bobbles were so fun. I, when I was starting it, I was a little concerned because bobbles take a long time. And I was like, oh gosh, this yoke is going to take forever. But, and it was kind of hurting my hands because I was holding my yarn weird to get the bobbles. These are seven stitch bobbles, so they're pretty big bobbles and it's worsted yarn. So, um, it was taking a while, but I kind of fell into a rhythm and then I really, really enjoyed the pattern, especially when I got to this part here. Um, this is a lot of like knit through back loops, purl, but it creates a fun, slightly different stitch definition than stocking net. So it's fun. It was really fun, like watching the diamonds form and like these four sets of diamonds. It's really fun to do that and get through the yoke. And then once I got through the yoke, it's been flying. Um, honestly, could have finished this week, but like I said, I started some new projects. So um, when I guess one more shout out on this, I, I'm going to shout out Nina Chicago, the yarn store in Chicago. I used to live in Chicago, so Chicago has a fond place in my heart. Still have a lot of friends there. Um, I didn't, I guess I didn't exactly buy this yarn there. Um, I bought yarn... Blue Sky Fibers worsted cotton yarn um, in a palette of colors for a baby blanket at the time, but I had talked to the person working there and um, mentioned that I was like thinking about making the fonda top for myself, and she she had used this for a garment, so she encouraged me to do it because she said that she had a short sleeve garment in the Blue Sky Fibers worsted cotton. She really liked it, so thanks to Nina Chicago. Um, also, I bought so much yarn there that they gave me this free bag. It was so fun. I would, I'm really excited to go back. Um, so my next trip to Chicago, I will probably go buy more yarn from Nina Chicago. Um, I don't know if I said this is the lemongrass color. So this beautiful electric yellow. Um, really, really fun. Really fun as a stripe in a baby blanket as well. I've made two baby blankets in Blue Sky Fibers Worsted Cotton. Both were the Chevron Blanket by A Space Chico. Um, it's a free blanket on Ravelry, so it's it's fun. It knits up quick, and it's it's like a fun five color blanket. So I made that one in purples and pinks for uh, Baby Girl, and one in kind of like purple, blue, this yellow and gray for Baby that we didn't know if it was a girl or a boy, but it turned out it was a girl. So. That was a fun blanket that I made recently. That was one of my spring baby knits. So that's that. Um, I think I mentioned one of my, so I guess those were my whips from previous weeks that I've been working on. Um, one of my cast ons I had this week is a secret test knit. So I can't say a lot about that, but it is associated with this year's Ramadan Wool Club. So I think it's going to come out soon as part of the end celebration of Ramadan and um, the end of the wool club. So more to come on that. Um, so that was my first cast on this week. My second cast on this week was part of the Knit Diverse Knit Along for 2022 by Amy Sher Makes. So shout out to Amy. Thanks for organizing that. Oh, I need to work on showing my colors in the screen before I'm ready. But you know, this is my first podcast, so. I'll learn. Um, I'm just kind of diving into this. I, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have that many followers on Instagram, so I don't think anyone's even going to watch this, but maybe it will be helpful for my two in real life knitting friends to see what I'm doing so I can stop spamming them with a million pictures during the week. Um, but who knows, maybe they won't even watch this, but you know, in case people do, <laughs> and if people don't, I, this is a really fun video diary for me. Um, so it's actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Um, I'm really enjoying this. So anyway, if you're watching this for some crazy reason, thank you. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So if you also don't know what you're doing and you want to do this just for fun and to get out of your comfort zone, do it. Why not? So anyway, back to the Knit Diverse Knit Along. So 
I love this knit along. Um, this I think last year Amy Charmake started this as a way to uh, feature and support any diverse knitters, makers, um, notion makers, pattern designers. Um, and I believe in 2021, I didn't participate, but I believe it was like any diversity. Um, but but this this knit along in 2022 is focused on Asian Pacific Islander um, knitters and designers. So I guess the requirement of the knit along is either making with um, yarn that's dyed, hand, hand dyed yarn by an Asian designer or a pattern by an Asian designer. Um, I chose to do both because I had some, I had stash yarn that I really, really wanted to use for a garment and also some patterns in my queue that I needed a reason to cast on ASAP. So I am making the Tina Say Knits Frequency Sweater. Um, this, I think, so she had, she first released the Wavelength Sweater and that I believe is DK yarn. I'm not positive, it could be more, but um, she got so much feedback from people in warmer climates and others that they wanted a fingering version. So, you know, it's April in Houston, it's going to get hot and then even hotter and then even hotter and, you know, feel like misery outside. So um, I'm trying to do all the fingering weight knits so that I can hopefully still wear them over the summer. Um, and this, like, this pattern is so fun. Um, I just did the first color work section so far, but I'm really excited. I'm almost to the second color work section. This is um, going, going to look like frequency, kind of like sound waves. So I'm really excited how this is knitting up. This yarn is Big Little Yarn Co., Melanie at Big Little Yarn Co., and her Nori. This is Nori, and this is Onigiri. So Onigiri is, is just so beautiful. It has um, tones of like grays and, and almost like black, like charcoal gray and yellow, um, like light green, dark green, olive green, and almost like a light light blue or, or grayish, grayish blue. Um, and then Nori is just like a really deep green that's really beautiful. So I'm really enjoying how this is knitting together. I am alternating skeins. You can kind of see one of them is a little bit lighter than the other. So it's really important when using hand dyed yarn to alternate skeins as I'm doing here. Um, so this has been really fun. Oh, and this stitch marker is from Hello Lavender Design. This was her Into the Wild collection. So you can see like a little, I guess, I guess a lion kind of popping out from behind the the flowers here and actually I think this looks really really nice against the dark green I actually had only used it kind of on like pink similar tone projects as the stitch marker but it's really popping against this which is really fun um yeah so that was my second cast on this week so I've been really really busy knitting um oh and this base from Big Little Yarn Co is Big Little Yarn Co's soft sock and so that's an 80-20 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Um, and I actually made, I have two friends that we knit presents for each other every year or, or so. Uh, one of my friends likes to sew. And I made a Relentless Shawl by Tammy Gore in those two colors for my friend. And I figured I had like maybe just enough left to do a short sleeve sweater. So um, I was really excited about the frequency sweater. I think, so some people might not like the fact that the color works like a bit fuzzy because when it turns into green on the onigiri, it obviously blends in with this dark green. But I thought it actually kind of worked with the theme of this top because with like the frequency sound waves, you know, like they're not always clear. Um, so I thought that'd be fun and like the white is really popping really well. So I'm okay with the fact that there are sections where it's not popping. I hope that I still say that when I'm through all the color work, but so far I kind of like it. So it is what I figured would happen and, and sort of intended to be this way. So that's going well so far. I'm really enjoying that. I guess I'm getting to the part where like fingering sweaters take forever, but that's okay. It's fun. It's about the process and I'm really enjoying it. 
But I guess it is a big difference. I just was knitting the worsted garment and now going to fingering. So if I was complaining about the bobbles, I know like now I'm sort of like, you know, getting to the slow and steady fingering sweater. So all good. Um, I guess kind of jokes on me because I also signed up for another test knit this week. Um, that's also a fingering sweater and this one's a long sleeve sweater. So <laughs> I, you know, I'll be knitting lots of fingering right now. Um, I have a couple months though, or maybe I think, yeah, I think eight weeks for this test knit. So I'm really excited. Um, I guess I will call Arrow out at <laughs> Arrow Knits and Pearls. I was like watching a lot of Arrow's videos and like love watching her and she knit so many garments every year. Um, so I'm inspired by her and her test knitting and was watching a video where she like went through the criteria that she uses on whether or not to test knit. And it's, I forget all the points, but more or less like, do you have yarn in your stash? One. And two, are you going to learn something new from the pattern? So both of these test knits, I was like, okay, you know, Arrow would ask. Do you have the yarn in your stash? Yes. Are you going to learn something new? Yes. So I signed up. Um, but I'm really excited. I, you know, want to be more plugged into the knitting community. So I have been just really inspired by the community this week and just diving right in. So here I am. So this test knit is the Sien blouse um, from, um, from Alteration Finds. Murti, I think her, is how you say her name. Um, and I am using Woolberry Fiber Co. yarn that I have in my stash, fingering yarn. Um, so this is gonna be my main color. This is called Snow Kissed Mountain. Um, it's like a variegated cream, kind of yellow toned a bit, but with like natural variegation there. Um, I was a little nervous about this color uh, against my skin tone, but I think it's going to be fine. I'm excited to see how it looks. These are my two contrast colors. So it's going to be a stripy blouse long sleeve sweater in these three colors. So the main color is Snow Kiss Mountain, and then the contrast colors are, I think this one's rhubarb, rhubarb pie, and this one is autumnal locks. I believe. Yeah, that's right. So these are all 100% Superwash Merino. This is her very Merino base, fingering weight. Um, I got these in early 2021. I think this collection was called Cozy. I'm not positive. Um, but it was like, I think her first collection in 2021. So... I'm really excited to use kind of like some stash yarn up. So we use quite a bit. Um, it's fun using stash yarn because then I can just buy more yarn. So I appreciate uh, hand dyed yard, yarn dyers and want to support them. So it's fun to be able to use some up. So that's that's the scene blouse. I haven't cast on yet. I'm hoping to wind that yarn today and maybe swatch. So we'll see if that happens because I also need to work on my test knit. I also need to work on the baby knit. I Love to finish that Fonda this weekend, but you know, who knows? And then all those things I'm, you know, just reaching for my frequency sweater. <laughs> it's so fun and addicting to try to get to the next color work session. So we'll see what I actually work on. Um, let's see, other things. Oh, so, I mean, this is really silly, but my friend Melanie, Melanie Made It, is in town this weekend. And she gave me these, she like pretty much stocks my entire Notions collection because She's sort of like, Nicole, you're crazy. I can't believe you're not using this yet. Um, you should be using it. So this is like, I don't know. I don't even know what this is called. It like bent darning needle. Um, I actually really don't mind ends. All my friends are like you know, always hating on ends and I actually find them quite meditative, but still my friends think that this will just like totally change the game for me. So, you know, I'll give it a try. Um, also, I was admiring her socks that had like these really lightweight, simple stitch markers on them because the stitch markers I have kind of way down sock fingering weight yarn sometimes. So she just said, pick out whatever you want, take them. So I just, I was trying to be nice and I just, I just took four colors, but she had a bunch more colors too. So <laughs> new stitch markers for me. Um, 
yeah, that's that. I guess uh, one other thing, like I've been kind of flipping through this notebook in front of me as I've been talking. Um, I like to put all of my, what are they called? Like the labels of yarn with uh, the yarn color in my knitting journal. So I'll show an example of like what one of my project pages looks like. So this is to set up for my stripy turtle tank. So this is the Abuelita Fiber Co. Um, first series of the Ramadan Wool Club this year. And this is the Ampersand Fiber from Shop La Mercerie. So I just like to track that. And so I can see like what the bases were and what the color was and what the colorway name was because over time I kind of tend to forget. So it's also just a really fun, oh, I hope I didn't just show something I wasn't supposed to show. Um, it's a really fun way to remember projects. Here's the frequency sweater. So big little yarn because labels are so fun. I love them. But yeah, so that's my knitting journal. It's like getting really fat. Um, and I have little stickers on it too. This is a yarn store in Denver, Lakewood, I think. And this is a from the Sound of Music Skiing Cocaine advent this year. Um, I just like put knitting related stickers on there when I get them. Um, yeah. So I guess other than knitting, um, I mean, I have been working a lot. Work's been overwhelming a bit. Um, but I really enjoy knitting. I also really read quite a bit. Um, I feel like I reach towards knitting and reading when I'm stressed or wanting some comfort or just like, you know, me time. I start every morning with a cup of coffee and a book before I start my day. It's a really nice way to ease into my day. I've been doing that for a few years. Um, Often I read kind of like nonfiction or work related books um, or kind of like business psychology type books in the morning to kind of just wake my brain up, but sometimes I'll reach for fiction too. I do read a lot of fiction too, but not in the morning, but um, I just thought it'd be fun to, I know like a lot of people like to knit and read, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of show what I'm reading right now and then also recent book acquisitions as well. So. Um, let's see, so fiction right now that I'm reading, I'm reading Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. I had just read The Lincoln Highway recently, that's his latest book, but this is like a fun book from the 30s about uh, kind of like people trying to make it in New York and also like the wealthy elite in New York at the time, so it's a fun period piece. I really like his style of book, so that's been fun. Um, and then kind of on the work side, I've been reading, and this is stupid, I thought about like whether I should even show this, but this book, Getting Things Done, like, I like to read about different habits that I can try to adapt. Um, and I follow Jules Acri, who lives in Austin, Texas, and she like, you know, is super organized, always seems like she's on top of everything, and she subscribes by this method and has like a setup and notion that I've been trying to leverage and use to keep my life organized. So. That's fun. Um, you know, always good to get different methodologies. Um, not that exciting. Not related to knitting. Um, and then my two book acquisitions this week. I've been trying to not buy as many books. I have so many books. But this book is so exciting. This is part of the Knit Diverse Knit Along that Amy Sure makes is organizing. So Emily Pan released this book this week. And there's a book club component to the Knit Diverse Knit Along. So of course I signed up for that. Um, super excited about that. It was an awesome reason to buy a new book and discover a new author. So I am excited about this. I think it's like a bit on Chinese methodology. Uh, not methodology, sorry. I'm thinking about my other book, Mythology. Um, so yeah, so it'll be cool to read that and cool to talk about it with other knitters. Um, and then the other book that came in this week was Bittersweet by Susan Cain. So I have I have book of the month. Um, I don't get it every month, but I like to see what they're featuring and um, like to support uh, writers who make it into those selections uh, when they're interesting books to me. Um, this one is Bittersweet by Susan Cain. I read Quiet by Susan Cain like a long time ago and absolutely loved it. Um, I feel like I finally felt like someone was speaking to me uh, with quiet. It's about like introversion, extroversion, um, how you can be a social introvert. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. So 
Um, she's also, I think she's, she was a lawyer who turned writer. Um, yeah, I just find her inspiring. Um, this book is Bittersweet How Sorrow and Longing Make Us Whole, so I'm really interested to read that as my next nonfiction read. So yeah, um, and I guess I wanted to wrap up with, I thought it'd be fun to do like three things that are bringing me joy this week, so um, can be silly, can be anything, just a fun way to wrap up. So um, I guess the first thing that's been bringing me joy this week is just the knitting community and knitting podcasts. Um, clearly, I guess I was so inspired that I decided to make my own with like very little prep and just, you know, totally, totally out of my comfort zone here. Um, I don't think anyone will watch this, but I just thought it'd be fun to document this and then I can watch this, you know, in five years and see what I was up to five years ago. So uh, thank you to the knitting community for just continuing to bring me joy. Um, there are just like far too many people to name, but I'm just feeling so inspired by so many people on Instagram and on YouTube and uh, what everyone's making, knitting designers, um, this knit diverse knit along, uh, pattern designers I'm working with my test knits. It's just like such an amazing community. Um, my second one's like really silly, but I, I guess I discovered decaf coffee this week and, or maybe a week or so ago, um, I had been like really just frequently having an afternoon latte and like just feeling so jittery and it's like keeping me from sleeping and was trying to cut back. But I kind of thought to myself like, why don't I just try decaf? That's stupid. Why have I not tried that? And I tried it this week and it just was a perfect replacement and like just drinking decaf coffee made me feel super productive again, just like regular coffee would and made me feel cozy and like was comforting and you know I didn't have to have like the crash or the jitters from regular coffee so if you haven't tried decaf coffee and you have a similar thing I like really recommend it so buy some fancy decaf coffee um and then the third thing is like my good friend in real life um who's Melanie made it on Instagram she and her husband bought a house, like, literally one block from my house. Um, she li uh, was living in Denver for a long time. We were friends. We were close friends when we were living in Chicago um, and then uh, remained friends. But they decided to make the big move to Houston. And, like, when they were house hunting, they, the, their perfect home was literally a block from us. So I'm just so excited. She's here for the weekend, and she is building her chicken coop in her backyard. She has chickens. So looking forward to all the fresh eggs that we're going to get. Um, Melanie, if you're listening, I'm excited for the eggs and all the knitting we're going to do together and everything else. So yeah, those are the three from silly to large things that are bringing me joy this week. So if you made it this far and you're listening, I, I'm not sure why, but I appreciate you. Um, if I can inspire one other person, you know, I think that'd be pretty cool. So thank you.